Welcome in, everybody. I'm Joey. When you hear those words, you know there is great mediocre driving incoming, and it'll be no different today. We're doing C-Class, and so I headed over to the digital dealership to get digitally ripped off on a brand new S2000. Hesitated on the color, though. Thought about yellow, but went with blue. This thing has been a killer C-Class car in past Forzas, so I'm interested to see how it holds up in the new one. Of course, we'll need to take into consideration that the driver is fucking terrible at this game. Now, the car is only a level one, but we do have a few car points to spend, so upgrading the air filters and the oil and cooling as well. And once I'm done pretending like I can install any of this in real life, that brings the power index on the car up to 437. Not great, it's gonna make the noobs look like they're Verstappen on a roid rage out there, but we'll see what we can do. What the fuck is this piece of shit? All right, we're starting at Laguna Seca, and qualifying went a little better than I thought it would. Starting in seventh with a pretty big gap to our PI here. That does give me some hope, though, that the S2000 is going to be a really solid car for us. And getting the jump right off the bat on this Integra, there is a car, Lightning McQueen, going speedy quick around the outside of him. Clearly, he's going to have some trouble through the turns. If that's how much acceleration he's got, the handling is probably not going to be there. A fellow S2000 up front also struggling with the handling, running off the track. And I'm going to do the same thing as I try to go around the outside of Dick Togs here. No clue what that means, but it sounds funny, so right on, Dick Togs. This guy on our left side with the Japanese livery, possibly also Chinese. Fuck if I know, I can barely speak English. He tried to pass us, but it didn't quite work out for him. The S2000 holding him back. Dick Togs making a second appearance for all the wrong reasons. Getting pissy with an S2000 and when the S2000 was trying to regain some stability after getting hit by Dick Togs. He almost hit me. Luckily, we got through there okay, and down through the corkscrew, we're taking it nicely up into third place. We're on the podium in an S2000 with nearly 70 lost PI. It could never last forever, and soon enough, my future self in a fully upgraded S2000 that Dick Togs was all over earlier has now caught back up to us as we're going through the corkscrew for the third time out of six. Once again, through there cleanly, making sure that turn 10 doesn't have the pleasure to smack me across the face with a penalty. Or at least another one, those douchebags. So we're through rainy curve and I couldn't quite carry the speed that my future self could. And around the penultimate corner, he's gonna steal third place from me so my future self can go suck my balls. Driver of the suck my balls, mate. Later on, lap four in fourth place, coming up the hill. I'm kind of in my own little jacuzzi here in between a couple of packs. And it looks like Lightning McQueen had about 12 too many beers and like any good wizard disappeared off to the right so we'll take our free pass up into third again but we have another challenger on lap five the penultimate corner once again we've got an acura integra that wants in i would have defended it but he just kind of came out of nowhere around that penultimate corner like i was saying earlier folks are just able to carry way more speed than it seems that i am that was my first clue that handling is probably going to be a priority when we're upgrading this thing. But we're making the most drafting down the straight, managing to hang around with the Integra a little bit, but through the corner, again, just not carrying all the speed that I would need to keep up, and that's ultimately where we're going to finish the race in fourth place. In my book, with my skill, I'm pretty darn happy with that. Obviously, would have liked to get onto the podium, but... The car's only going to get better from here, so it's a good start. The driving's not going to get better, but the car will. Back in the garage, I spent some time tinkering. The car is level 8 now, so that means we've got 1,400 car points to spend. And here's where I netted out, dropping the top speed and upgrading everything else, so acceleration, handling, braking, all going up. And the car's PI is at 479 now, inching closer to that 500 mark. We're almost there. The next race is at Spa, a couple of guys in D-types qualifying ahead of me, so I was a little worried that I had the wrong car for the track, but qualifying in third, so not too bad. What was bad was the classic Spa Turn 1 massacre, some poor guy getting spun, the grid screaming in pain, absolute chaos. 
but being the selfish bastard I am, quickly put that out of my mind, put my head down, and tried to catch up with first place who, around Blanchemont, got himself a one second penalty. The penalty hammer has spoken, and you can see here at the bottom of your screen, third place is also hanging around. He almost pulled up alongside, but appears to have lost some traction coming out of the chicane and onto the straight. We're going to see who's got the best acceleration. My money is on him, but the S2000 with a statement down the straight, you shall not pass, but the Alpine with a little bump through turn one telling me to get a move on. We're side by side down the straight heading into Eau Rouge. He's very solidly in second place now, so I'll just happily slot back into the draft and try to pick up a little bit of speed. Breaking just a tad because I've got no stones to go full out and up the hill, getting the run on the Alpine. We're in yet another drag race to the end of the straight, so we'll take this opportunity to take a look at the leaderboard. The leader is 1.1 seconds ahead, but has that one second penalty. So we're in a pretty good spot, but any more battling from the two of us knuckleheads back here, and we might have a problem. Coming through Lake Calm, a bit deep, that's going to compromise my exit, the Alpine, taking full advantage of that, we're back to side by side racing, still trading paint, and around Melvedee, he's won the battle, and make sure to give him plenty of space to get back onto the track, no penalties given, and we would settle in at the end of the lap, he would go on to grab first place, and I would be stuck back here, still trying to catch up to the former leader, now second place. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, this is our qualifying P1, so it's going to be no easy task, but if I can stay in the slipstream, that 1.4 second penalty might give me the advantage, and I just got an even bigger advantage with the D-Type drifting wide once again, his total penalties adding up to 2.7 seconds now. That is massive. The penalty hammer hopefully coming down directly on his confidence. That might not be the case though, because through Eau Rouge, he's built that gap up to about a second. Now, let's do a math problem real quick if you guys don't mind. It's a one second gap to the guy ahead who has 2.7 seconds in penalties, plus me needlessly pushing equals how much time in penalties for myself? Well, it's about 0.4 seconds. So yeah, a long-winded way of saying I've gotten myself a pointless penalty here. When in reality, I really don't need to catch this guy, I just need to keep this pace and make sure he doesn't get too far ahead. Well now, he basically just got a free four tenths of a second and I've shot myself in the foot. But let's try to stay positive here. One thing we're not worrying about is tire wear. I've got the sports tires on, I believe, which degrade far less than the racing tires do. The drawback, of course, being less grip. Speaking of less grip, this guy, We'll soon go for a little beach vacation. Off he goes, everyone, wave your hands. He's boarded the plane. Next stop, beautiful, sunny Hawaii. And that's where we'd finish, second place. The Honda is officially on the podium, and we got a bunch more car levels out of that as well, so we've got some car points to spend. This time, opt-in for more of a handling setup, and actually I was on street tires before. Now I'm on the sports tires. Here's where we ended up. Speed and acceleration down, handling and braking up. Now we're going to do a little lightning round of some lackluster races because these just weren't all that exciting. First one is at Suzuka, and I actually needed a bit more handling if I wanted to win this race. Nonetheless, had a quick and fun battle with the BMW here, trying to poke back up the inside, but ended up just poking his backside and nearly spinning him out. Later on, he'd help the greenkeepers out a bit by cutting the grass, keeping it nice and short. That patch looked a little long, and that's where he'd finish third place for that one. Next up was Mugello, and my strategy was really good, because on lap four, I got the message, pit this lap, fuel levels low. So while my monkey brain was trying to compute how my fuel levels were low, I totally missed the pits. Turns out, I didn't fill back up after qualifying. Genius move for myself. Strategy on par with Ferrari once again. So that next lap I pit, and when I came out, I fell into 9th and now into 10th place. In the end, making up those two places to finish in 8th, which I shouldn't have lost in the first place, by the way. 
Now we're over to Catalonia, starting P2. So the qualifying has been really good in the S2000. Proven to be a pretty darn good car. Getting the jump on the Integra right off the bat. Getting up into first place into turn one. The Integra back up the inside. Getting a tap from behind from another S2000. And that was pretty much that race. So, yeah, again, just some lackluster races, but I was getting some car levels out of them. So that was the good thing. Getting closer to unlocking all those parts we'll need. Now, here's something that is really annoying. The race is about to start. Your blood is pumping. You're excited. You want to go out there and win. And then the intermission countdown gets stuck at one second. So, okay, we're just going to sit here and we're going to wait for about five to ten minutes. And then eventually... <gasps> the launch countdown starts so you're thinking all right here we go we're finally gonna get into the race until it just doesn't go down to zero so okay let's zoom out again and we'll fast forward through another five to ten minutes it's probably less than that but it feels like it just sitting here it does feel like five to ten minutes here's what's next we get a black screen for another few minutes we're just waiting for cars now whatever the hell that fucking means what are they building the cars from the ground up before every race come on what are we doing turn 10 get your darn ducks in a row all right starting p1 at the nurburgring trying out some race tires this time so we've got the option between soft mediums and hards we're gonna go for mediums and remember when i said starting p1 well forget about that let's just say we started p3 and go from here a couple Mazdas behind one trying to barge his way up the inside of turn one and pink Barbie behind us in the Miata is going to give us a really nice fight this race. So coming through the arena section, dropping down into second gear, being careful not to go out too wide, hugging the left side to cut back to the right, slowly reeling in that BRZ and the Miata up front. Pulling over to the right to think about a move into the hairpin on the BRZ, but he pulls over to the right pretty late, I might say, cutting me off and keeping me from overtaking. Now the Barbie Mazda is right on my tail. In fact, he's coming right along the right side. That's going to keep me narrow through the left-hander. And now this right-hander, I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to call it Kryptonite Curve because it is my Kryptonite. I cannot get this one right for the life of me. I actually did it okay there, but the Miata still getting closer. I actually took a look at the stats on that Miata, and the acceleration and handling combo are off the charts. It's insane. The S2000 can't really compete with that, but the top speed is pretty low so coming out of the corners he'll have the advantage but by the end of the straights i should be pulling away it'll be an interesting dynamic to this race we'll see how it plays out going defensive into the final corner to try to keep that miata behind going for the move looks like we've done it down the straight we go keeping one eye on those time gaps in the top left we are extending from the Miata. That's good news. Not good news. I've completely sent it deep. The other two guys did as well, and I was way too focused on what they were doing and not looking for my breaking points. But who needs breaking points anyways? They're a total waste of time, in my opinion. Spoken like a true noob who's looking for a move around the outside of the Miata, leaving just enough space on the inside for him. A little contact made. Nothing too egregious, though. No penalties handed out. And accelerating onto the short straight, we got the move done. Over to Kryptonite Corner once again. Barbie is right on my tail. So a very similar situation to lap numero uno, hopefully. Fingers crossed by the end of the straight, we can start reeling him back in or get in front. Here we go. We're starting to inch closer. And he actually puts the brakes on a little too early. That gives me the corner. And we're through the chicane. Still in second place. That was a pretty close call, though. On lap three, we're going to do it all over again. And I got to be honest, I would rather my eyes be scooped out with a spoon than be forced to watch myself screw up that corner again. So sorry to put you through this as well, but it is what it is. It is how the race played out side by side with Barbie once again into the chicane. It looks like I've won yet another battle, but certainly not the war because coming out, I've given up the inside into the final corner and I can try to fight it around the outside as much as I want. I'm never going to win that fight. That was his from the beginning. He got the inside and off she goes into the sunset while I'm just stuck back here trying to figure out how the hell I just got my ass handed to me by a plastic figurine. Only on this channel would that happen. So there you go. Here are the numbers. Dropping two places. Finishing in third. 
All right, final race, Catalonia, starting from the back because it's funny, and frankly, I deserve to after that last race. Didn't qualify in this one, and clearly the guys behind me also didn't either, so we all just wanted to enjoy the disgusting racing we are about to see. Turn one is bound to be a mess, so we'll keep an eye out up front to see what happens. For the most part, it looks pretty good right now. No, nope, one guy got spun out by the golf, but other than that, Things looked okay, but after that, the floodgates opened, and the Force of Gods decided it's time for everyone to die, so this Integra spinning out, causing a mass collision over on the left side, the Hyundai spinning out some other guy, and I think there was someone over on the right side that also got spun out. Up the hill, we found another lawnmower and the golf up ahead, shamelessly pushing a poor guy off to the left forcing him against his will to mow lawns and he didn't make the chicane easy on me either ironically his name's karma police another gti came by and well gave him what he deserved a little bit of karma and after all this i'm 13 almost 14 seconds behind the leader before lap one ends at the chicane just before the final straight this guy doesn't turn in so I was a little curious. I thought that might have been intentional, like he was trying to block me. So down the straight, I took a look behind, and look at what I found. This douche canoe, who's clearly struggling to drive in a straight line, is just taking another guy with him into the beach. Eventually, I caught up with another fun-sized pack, everyone just ready to hit the hell out of each other. So around the carousel, we've got some unnecessary roughness going on here. Some collisions are being made. No penalties handed out here. The forecast for the 90 degree turn up ahead is cloudy with a chance of more contact. The RX-7 on the left, I think that was an RX-7, didn't get a good look at it, was punted wide and then he comes flying through, opting to avoid the chicane altogether gaining a bunch of spots out of it. I'm sure he got a penalty for it, or honestly, the penalty system can be pretty dumb. Maybe he didn't. This WRX just giving me absolutely no space, touching me a ton, total pervert. And now I'm the one making contact with the GTR. It seems to happen in all the races like this where eventually I just lose all hope and start hitting people too. I become one of them. I become a rammer. I don't think that contact was all that bad, but I have lost all hope completely. Whiffy Peach, 78, didn't like the paint job on the right side of the S2000, so scraped the whole thing off and continued the artwork through the chicane. Coming off the straight into turn one on lap four, getting a bump from our pervert WRX friend. This time really crossing the line and going full blown up my rear end. Not cool, dude, not cool. And as I like to do, check in on the leaderboard to see where we're doing as far as the time gaps go. And it looks like we've fallen just about 30 seconds behind the leader. So nothing big, you know, pretty close. Something we can make up in one and a half laps for sure. Here we actually find ourselves in an oasis per se of good racing. Going for the double overtake into turn five, the Integra is now behind, the VW and I still sorting ourselves out. Turn six will be the decider, he's got the inside, I need to outbreak him, and the job gets done. So hey, some silver linings. On the final lap, somehow, by some miracle, a top five finish has somehow made its way into arm's reach, or maybe I've just lost so many brain cells, I think I see fifth place. That's most likely the case, but through the chicane, I made some contact with him, so I'm trying my best to race him cleanly, and due to the loss of brain cells, I've tapped the brakes a little too hard. Sixth place is around me, and it's a photo finish with the VW. I think I crossed the line in front of him, and I did by two hundredths of a second. So, quite the race to end things on. It was a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do all the stuff the YouTubers tell you to do at the ends of videos. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Alrighty, bye everybody.